All throughout history, humanity has been fascinated with building the most impressive structures we can imagine. The Pyramids of Giza, the Colosseum, the Taj Mahal, basically every corner of the world, people have brought their best minds together to build some of the most extraordinary creations imaginable. However, for every epic skyscraper or gorgeous monastery that's ended up being built, there have been plenty of designs and ideas that never made it to the real world despite being planned. Some of these designs ultimately failed to be constructed due to financing constraints, issue with city planning, or in many cases because the proposed structure was just utterly insane. Today, we're going to bring you the most ridiculous of these, from skyscrapers to pyramids and, well, pretty much everything in between. In the 1930s, the Soviet Union had some rather ambitious ideas. Already the largest nation on Earth and well on their way to becoming one of the most powerful, the communist leaders wanted some way to commemorate their success. Of course, this wouldn't be anything for the benefit of the average citizen, because oh, this was the USSR. Instead, the idea was to create a gargantuan, epic building where the Soviet leadership could live and host their meetings. This would be called the Palace of the Soviets. And between 1931 and 1933, several architectural competitions were held to select its designer. The winner of these competitions was Boris Arfan, whose vision was, well, Rather extraordinary to say the least. You see, the rounds of competitions, as well as competitiveness with other projects at the time, had pushed the architects to make their designs bigger and bigger. Arfan's final design, approved by the Soviet government, envisioned a building that stretched 416 meters into the sky, or around 1,365 feet. This would make it taller than all but the largest modern skyscrapers, and it would have even surpassed the recently completed Empire State Building, which was the tallest in the world at the time. Its internal volume would have been immense, containing more space than the the six largest American skyscrapers at the time. The Grand Hall would seat more than 20,000 people, with various wings and sections dedicated to specific government branches. And the cherry on top? A massive 30-meter statue of Lenin. Overall, it was quite an ambitious project for anyone in the early 30s, but this wasn't some fairy tale propaganda bit that would never be realized and would later be forgotten. No, the Soviets were actually determined to make this happen. The first step was to clear the land that had been chosen for it, which unfortunately contained the Orthodox Cathedral of Christ the Savior. But by this point, the Soviets had already demolished nearly 30,000 Orthodox churches, and this one uh, was also not going to be spared. In fact, after its walls were stripped, it was publicly blown up, and construction on the palace began soon after. Drilling, laying, and planning went on steadily for a few years until everything came to a screeching halt. You see, in June 1941, Germany invaded the USSR, opening up one of the deadliest series of battles in all of human history. Consequently, projects like the palace were basically ignored. Its workers were sent into military service, and then the metal used in the early stages of construction was taken and used for wartime production. Just to interrupt today's video to tell you about a fantastic sponsor, and that is Ridge Wallet. Look, the holidays are just around the corner, and are you looking for gifts? Well, you should be. And Ridge is the gift that you are looking for, whether it's for a loved one or maybe just yourself. It's a nice gift for yourself. It gets rid of that old bulky wallet. I had the same wallet since I was 18. This leather monstrosity that was all worn out and terrible looking. And a few years ago, Ridge sponsored me and I've never looked back. This is fantastic. It holds 12 cards. I've just got three in there. I don't have 12. I don't know what, like, what would you, your library card, your Tesco club card, what are you keeping in there? But it can hold 12 if you want. There's also the key case, which uh, holds up to six keys. I've got my work keys in here. I think there are four. Post, upstairs, downstairs, outside. Easy. And uh, there's no jangling around, no bulky, weird, like, chain of keys. It's perfect. Look at that. It's slim. Buy these together, by the way, for a limited time, you get 30% off. Plus, they dropped a new collection, Hyper Lime, inspired by performance gear. It looks fantastic. It's ultra bright. And then there's also the ceramic powder coated collection. This is the lavender one. This one feels so soft and nice. It's uh, it's really something. Great bits of kit. You can get up to 30% off through December the 20th by using my link, ridge.com slash sideprojects, plus enter for a chance to win a Ridge bundle worth $4,000. Thanks to Ridge for sponsoring this video, and now back to it. After the war, Stalin seemingly had little interest in the project, and despite it being revised several times, the construction of the immense Palace of the Soviets never made it past its foundation. But that's more than can be said for a massive proposed project in Japan. In the 1980s, Japan's property had become some of the most expensive on Earth due to their booming economy and skyrocketing population. The issue was especially apparent in Tokyo, where overpopulation was starting to become a bit of a hot topic. One corporation thought of a grand solution to this, one of the largest buildings ever constructed called the Shimizu Mega City Pyramid. Its base would be a massive eight square kilometers, or three square miles, and its height would reach the absolutely ridiculous 2,000 
3,004 meters or 6,575 feet. This megastructure would hypothetically house up to a million people and could be built over the water of the Tokyo Bay in order to not take up extra space. The creators envisioned the exterior walls being covered in solar panels to provide power, extensive use of robots for construction and maintenance, and even a personal transit system of pods that would launch people around the Pyramid City. In the early 1990s, the designers traveled around the globe, patenting the design in any office that they could get their hands on and throwing the idea to as many potential investors as possible. However, as you might imagine, there were a few problems with their vision. First of all, a mega city housing a million people is impressive, but as some critics have pointed out, isn't exactly that significant for the region. The Tokyo metropolitan area is one of the most populated places on Earth, with a current estimate of 40 million people. And so, just taking away a million of these didn't seemed like it would immediately solve the deeper issue of affordable housing. Second, Japan sits in a spot that is highly seismically active, meaning this superhuge structure would not only need to be able to support its own weight, but continue to do so during a strong earthquake. A collapse could mean hundreds of thousands of casualties, and it simply isn't worth the risk. Finally, there's the construction materials and cost. The designers are banking on the idea that the right materials will be invented soon, preferably cheap versions of them as well, because the current cost estimates run as high as $600 billion. And that doesn't include the billions annually that's going to be needed to maintain it. The original plan from the Shimizu Corporation was to start building in the year 2030 and finish it by the year 2110. Now, to be fair, Shimizu is already 220 years old, so they're no stranger to long-term planning, but this is one project that people are going to need to somehow see before they start believing. Now, skyscrapers are the ultimate symbol of a thriving city. Towers of metal and glass stretching into the clouds, they are something of an epitome of a modern metropolis. And so, it comes as no surprise that some of the wildest construction proposals involve insane ideas for building the tallest buildings on Earth. We'll start with what is probably the most ludicrous of all, the X-Seed 4000, and yes, that is its real name. Designed for Tokyo, this monster of a building was intended to be twice as tall as the giant pyramid that we just mentioned, with a ludicrous height of four kilometers, or two and a half miles. This would be, by far, the tallest construction project in human history, nearly five times the size of the world's current tallest building. Structural stability would be achieved by its shape, which was modeled after the nearby Mount Fuji. In fact, the proposed design would be about 200 meters taller than the actual mountain. The idea for the Exceed 4000 was announced by Tai C Corporation in 1995, and the hope was that it could contain more than a million people and maglev train systems for rapid transportation. Of course, this project was never realized. You'd know about it, and for quite a few reasons. First up are the environmental issues. Just like the Shimizu Pyramid, the Exceed 4000 would need to handle earthquakes and tsunamis. Not only that, its immense height would require extensive technology to regulate air pressure throughout the building, and the slightest failure of the system could be catastrophic for its millions of inhabitants. On top of all of this, the materials required would be at least 3 million tons of steel, and the whole thing would cost up to $1.7 trillion which would have been a significant portion of the entire GDP of Japan. On a slightly smaller note, there's the proposed Ultimate Tower, a skyscraper that would hypothetically transform the skyline of San Francisco with a height of 3.2 kilometers or 2 miles. The designer of the Ultimate Tower claims to have drawn his inspiration from termite nests, as it would house a dense, self-sustaining population. He also envisions it to be the most environmentally friendly project in history, having many ecosystems including forests, rivers, and lakes, and in his own words, being open to the elements. Perhaps it's these ambitious plans that have put off the city of San Francisco from taking up his offer, or maybe it's the uh, $150 billion price tag. On the other side of the United States, New York City has had its fair share of proposed skyscrapers. For example, there's the 2017 proposal for the Big Bends, which would essentially be a huge arch in downtown Manhattan. Supposedly, this curved shape is a way to circumvent height restrictions for skyscrapers because it wouldn't technically be one skyscraper, but the public reception to this building was terrible, so it doesn't seem like there's any current plans to build it. There's also the proposed New York Stock Exchange Tower, which was proposed by Donald Trump in the late 90s, but this idea never made it off the ground. These are some pretty wild ideas, but it's not like huge skyscrapers are a foreign concept to places like Tokyo or San Francisco. The same, however, can't be said for Paris in the 1930s. In 1937, 
The World Fair was coming to Paris, and a man named Eugene Freysenet designed the ultimate destination for all the tourists that would soon be arriving, Fair de Monde, or the Lighthouse of the World. This would be 700 meters, or 2,300 feet in height, which is a crazy proposal for the 1930s. If it had been built, it would still rank as the second tallest building on Earth today. But its most interesting feature was the spiral highway that twists all the way to the top, which was intended to be an easy way for cars to drive nearly all the way to the top negating the need for elevators. One can only imagine how terrifying a traffic jam would be at such heights, and this is probably one of the many reasons why the project was definitely abandoned. Now, the Azerbaijan Tower is a planned megatall skyscraper that would have reached 1,000 meters in height or around 3,450 feet, which would make it the tallest on Earth. This behemoth makes our list not only because it was actually approved and then later abandoned, but because it was also planned to be accompanied by no fewer than 41 artificial islands in the Caspian Sea, which would make up a new $100 billion city to the south of Baku, Azerbaijan. The ambitions for the city, called the Khazar Islands, was simply off the charts. The investor group of companies envisioned more than a million residents, which seems to be a bit of a standard for the huge projects in today's video, as well as multiple universities, several airports, and a legitimate Formula One racetrack. Around 150 bridges would be built to connect these islands to the mainland, and the whole thing would be this massive, clean, hypermodern society. And if this is all sounding a bit too good to be true, well, that's because it is. Construction on the islands actually began in 2011. And the skyscraper was supposed to begin construction a couple of years later. But the CEO of the investor group was suddenly arrested in 2015 for his failure to pay over $50 million of debt that he owed to the International Bank of Azerbaijan. After his release, he insisted that the project would continue and that the islands were scheduled to be finished by 2025, but funding seems to be scarce and it doesn't seem that they'll be ready anytime soon. This was a perfect example of an overly ambitious project, as the cost of the city itself is more than double the GDP of the entire country, and despite the CEO claims it doesn't appear that many foreign investors want to get involved with this one. But as unrealistic as the Khazar Island scheme is, it seems like a bit of a walk in the park compared to our final project today, and that is the Analemma Tower. Realizing that cities like Tokyo, New York City, and Beijing don't really have a lot of space left in their busy centers, architects at Clouds AO thought of a solution. Instead of building a skyscraper up from the ground, they suggest hanging one upside down from an asteroid. The idea is to tether a small asteroid and redirect it to Earth, where it can be put in a geostationary orbit. From there, incredibly strong cables would suspend the new building hanging underneath it, which would presumably be an immensely tall skyscraper or ground scraper, since we're uh, working in reverse now. As for the cost, <laughs> where do we even begin? There aren't exactly good estimates for how much it costs to bring an asteroid to Earth, since uh, we've never done it. But for a starting point, NASA once estimated that it would cost well over a billion dollars to bring a small asteroid into lunar orbit, so, well, I guess that's close enough for a figure. After solving the asteroid problem, it would then be the most expensive construction project in history, not just because of its scale, but because we would have to invent newer, stronger materials to support the dangling weight. The architects say that the best way to make this building affordable would be to build it in Dubai, as they've shown to be, quote, a specialist in tall building construction at one-fifth of the cost of New York City construction. But they plan to eventually have it hanging over New York, so apparently this means creating the thing over Dubai and then moving it across the world, which is a whole other expense. If this monstrosity uh, were somehow completed, it won't be. The price for rent would be so absurdly high that one can only picture the richest billionaires purchasing space in it. So all in all, the Alama Tower is probably going to remain in the concept phase forever where it should remain. Thanks for watching.